Welcome to your multivariable calculus journey. I'll be your instructor. My name is Professor Erica Rose, and I am here to help make this challenging and exciting topic a little bit easier to understand. So to begin our journey, we're going to be exploring vectors in two dimensions and three dimensions. So what is a vector, you might be asking? Well, that's a great question. A vector is a directed line segment having two important features that distinguish it from a line segment. So that first important feature is that a vector must have direction. The second important feature of our vector is that it must have a length or a magnitude. So a vector is a directed line segment having both direction and length. So let's better appreciate what a vector is by considering an arbitrary vector in R2. So let's suppose we have some beautiful vector V here. Notice how my vector has a hat. That helps us to distinguish a vector from a point. So let's say we have a vector V defined by the directed line segment A to B, and this is such that a is what we call our initial point, the starting point, and B is the terminal point, or the ending point. So what does this look like? Well, let's say here is point A, and here is point B. How do we define the vector? Well, we know that it starts at A and ends at B. So starting here at our initial point, we draw a directed line segment to point B, making sure to include that arrow to distinguish that, hey, this is a directed line segment. The arrow indicates the direction of our vector. So here we're looking at the more formal definitions of a vector in the plane, or in R2, as well as the vector in space, or in R3. So here is our first definition. Let's suppose that we have this vector V in the plane, defined by the directed line segment PQ. So if we begin by letting P be the ordered pair X sub 1, Y sub 1, and we'll let Q be the ordered pair X sub 2, Y sub 2, then we can define the components of our vector. So we have the component form. Because we want to know what are the coordinates of our vector. So the component form is always going to be, I want you to make a note of this, to find your component form, it's always terminal, the terminal point minus the initial point. So the component form of vector V defined by the directed line segment P to Q is going to be the terminal minus initial. So we have X sub 2 minus X sub 1 for the X coordinate of our vector. And then we have Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 for the Y component of our vector. Now remember, when we first looked at this, we said that Directed line segments, or these vectors, have both direction and length. So how do we find the length, or how do you find the magnitude? Well, we use the distance formula, our Pythagorean identity. So the length of vector v is simply defined as the distance between these two points. So we have the square root of x sub 2, minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. And this, of course, is all under that square root. So how does this transition into space or into three dimensions? Well, we simply add the third component. So here, let's let p be defined as the ordered triplet x sub 1, y sub 1, z sub 1, and let q be the ordered triplet, x sub 2, y sub 2, z sub 2. So to find the component form of a vector in R3, we do the same thing as R2. So remember, terminal minus initial. So we can say that the component form of vector v 
still defined by the directed line segment P to Q, but this time the component form has three components. We still have X sub 2 minus X sub 1. We still have Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1. But now that we're in three dimensions, we add Z sub 2 minus Z sub 1. So you have that third component. And then last but not least here, how are we going to find the magnitude of this vector? How are you going to find the length? Well, again, we simply use the distance formula. So the length of vector V, or you could even, if you'd like, put the magnitude of vector PQ, since they are equivalent. And this is going to be the big old square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared plus z sub 2 minus z sub 1 squared. And that is all underneath the square root. And a friendly algebra warning slash reminder here. I know it can be tempting to cancel those squares, but remember, we can't cancel anything without factoring. So practice good algebra here. And one final reminder or note before we go ahead and look at examples. Notice here how I've defined the magnitude. I use a double bar around my vector v to indicate I'm talking about the length of this vector. So what I want you to notice, you could also use a single bar. So sometimes you'll see the magnitude is denoted by a double bar. You could also denote this as a single bar. Right? Both of these are representing magnitude. So let's go ahead now and look at an example. So before we begin our example, I want to point an important feature out about vectors. And that's that the position of a vector is in fact irrelevant. Once we know the components of a vector, we can rewrite the vector in its standard position. So let's take a look at what do I mean here. So example number one, we are asked to find the components of the vector from 0.12 to 0.44. So let's think about this. What is our initial point? Where are we starting? Well, we're starting here at the point, we'll say P is defined as 1, 2. Where is this vector ending? This vector is ending at its terminal point. So what's the terminal point here? Our terminal point, let's label this as Q, is 4, 4. And what do we want? We want the components. So we want to go ahead here and find vector V defined as vector P, Q. So before we go about finding the components, let's sketch a quick graph. So we're starting with the initial point at the ordered pair 1, 2. So here is that first point P, and this vector is going to end at the ordered pair 4, 4. So right about here. If you have graphing paper, it's always easiest to sketch with, a, with graphing paper. But if not, labeling will do. And so here is our vector V, or our directed line segment, from point P to point Q. So what are the components? So we, of course, want to recall and to remember that it's always going to be defined as the terminal point minus the initial point. So to find the x component, we take the terminal point, x sub 2, and we subtract the initial point, x sub 1. To find the y component of our vector, we take the terminal point, y sub 2, and subtract the initial point, y sub 1. So let's go ahead and plug in what we are given here. So actually, if we label these ordered pairs, point P is the initial point, so that's x sub 1, y sub 1, and the terminal point is the ordered pair 4, 4, so this is x sub 2, y sub 2. And plugging these in, we can see that vector V here is defined as 4 minus 1 for the x component, and then 4 minus 2 for the y component, which leaves us with a beautiful final answer of 3, 2. Now, what this vector is called, or what this form of the vector is called, is the standard position. This 
is the standard position of our vector. So we can say that a vector v defined as or defined by the components v sub 1, v sub 2 is in standard position or standard form. So what makes this in standard form? Well, this vector always starts at the origin. That's its initial point. So it starts at the origin, has an initial point at the origin, and this vector terminates or ends at the ordered pair or whatever dimension you're in. It ends at the components themselves. So here this is going to be ending at the ordered pair v sub 1, v sub 2. So in our case, our vector in standard position is going to end at the ordered pair 3, 2. So let's think about what this looks like graphically. So looking up at our graph, we know that we have an initial point now at the origin, 0, 0, and a terminal point at the ordered pair 3, 2. So drawing our directed line segment here, here is our vector v in its standard form or its standard position, v sub 1, v sub 2. We have the vector 3, 2. Now, important note here. Notice the difference between a vector. The vectors have those sharp angles versus an ordered pair has the rounded parentheses. So it's going to be essential that you keep this in mind to distinguish, is it an ordered pair or is it a vector that you're talking about? The last thing we want to observe here is how our position is irrelevant. These two vectors are equivalent. Even though they're in different positions, they still have the same length and the same direction. So we can take that vector v and put it anywhere else we want on the graph as long as it has consistent direction and consistent position.